Today we are going to make a training on IPG Plus technology. IPG Plus technology is an intercom system developed over IP technologies. We are going to follow on a presentation where we will teach how to program all the devices, focusing on its programming. Me and my colleague Jose, we are going to start this presentation. Okay, Jose, please, go ahead. Hello, I'm Jose. As Mark said, I will be driving this presentation and he will be on the side of the panels, making all the steps in the programming of the devices. To start with the presentation, in which we are going to talk about the installation topologies and devices connection. Then we're going to do a description of the installation of the panels in the office. And then we're going to talk about device programming modes. To start with the programming, we're going to program the block number one. Then we're going to do the programming of the general access. And to conclude, we're going to set up the alarm inputs in the Wi-Fi monitor. We're, going to, we're also going to do an um, example of manual IP address assignment. And to conclude with the presentation, we're going to give you additional information. Talking about installation topologies and device connections, okay. first of all, I want to say that all the devices come with a jumper, which is used to select the mode of supply the device that can be in three ways, 18 volts, 48 volts in standard PoE, or 12 volts in locally powered. Okay, uh, the first way to connect devices is using a network structure with D4LG plus PoE. You have to keep in mind that the maximum distance between two Ethernet points of the network is of 100 meters and the maximum distance between two PoE powered points of the network is of 70 meters. Here in the picture you can see that we have two door panels, one code panel and one push button panels that are supplied by a D4LG plus PoE which is also supplied with an FIG plus power supply. And then we have a guard unit and a hands-free audio unit that are supplied by another one, D4LG plus PoE, but this is not supplied by an, a power supply. This is supplied by another one, D4LG plus PoE. This is because you can you can wiring it in twice uh, in local mode that means that the, supp the supply comes from an FIG plus power supply or in column riser that means that the supply comes from another one okay you can see in the picture the example then you have another way to connect devices is in the daisy chain network structure you have to keep in mind that the maximum distance between two ethernet points of the network is of 100 meters and again, the maximum distance between two PoE powered points of the network is of 70 meters. And you don't have to connect any device directly to the DCP G plus output. Okay. Here you, you can see in the picture that we have a Nexa panel connected with an D4LG plus PoE. And then we have the daisy chain network structure in which we have the DC the G plus switch with an FADC48 power supply that supplies the chain of DCS G plus that are Ethernet switches that turns the 48 volts of the output of the DCP G plus in 18 volts ready to supply the devices. Of course, the jumper of the supply selection must be at 18 volts. Other way to connect devices is using Ethernet switches. You have to keep in mind that the maximum distance between two Ethernet points of the network is of 100 meters. Uh, and another thing you have to keep in mind is that you will need to connect to supply locally the device with a uh, power supply at 12 volts, for example using an HRF12. And the last one is using PoE switches. You have to keep in mind that the maximum distance between two PoE powered points of the network is of 80 meters. And of course the jumper must be in 48 volts position. Then we are gonna do the description of the installation. We have several panels in which 
we have a general access uh, with an 6502 G plus code panel connected with an a guard unit that will be a general guard unit and also an IP camera. Then we have the block one with three apartments. In the block one we have a Nexa panel door a door Nexa panel with EL632G plus 48 module. And also we have the first apartment with an Art 7 AWG plus monitor. And then we have in a daisy chain connect structure uh, the second apartment in which we have three devices, two monitors, uh, Art 7G Plus 48, and one hands free audio unit, Art 1G Plus. And then in the, uh, in the third and final apartment, we have the Wi Fi monitor, Art 7WG Plus PCM, with the PCM that is a private call module uh, panel. Now Mark is going to show you how it is disrupted in the panels or the devices. Now we are going to present the panel that we will be showing for this training. Here in the panel we have a section which represents the general panel. This panel is a code entry panel 6502. Also in the general part we have a guard unit. It's an Android guard unit with a built-in camera. And also we are going to be using a non beef camera connected at the main entrance. The site continues with a building. In this building we are using a Nexa panel, the panel that we are going to use as server panel to manage the installation configuration. And this panel is directly linked with several apartments. One of those apartments we have here is the apartment that is uh, having an Android monitor. This is apartment number one. Apartment number two is having three devices. Two of them are monitor units, and one of them is an Art1 G Plus audio hands free unit. And finally, we are going to, to show how to program the monitor with the alarms, the PCM, and the Wi Fi capability. This is a Wi Fi monitor, so we will be teaching how to pair the APP and see the properties of the APP. Also, in another training, you can see how to configure the system with the SIP server, CPAVX, and VoIP phone. It's possible also to call in between the units with the VoIP phone, even creating groups and making a queuing process. All what the power of the PAVX gives as benefit. So now let's start on how to program the G Plus Nexa panel, which is going to be used as a server panel. Now we're going to talk about the device programming modes. We have two modes of program devices, manual mode directly on the screen or using its push buttons or via web server. To program the device via web server, you will need to connect your laptop to the network and then type the IP address in the web browser to access the, the web server of the device. Um, you have to pay attention that the, all the devices come with the factory default IP address that is 10.00.254. Now we're going to start with the programming of the block number one and programming the master panel. The master panel is the one who has to be activated during all the registration because manage uh, all the registration of the devices. You have two ways to program the, the master panel in this case because we have uh, push button panels with EL632G plus module as you can see in the picture and for give the automatic IP address configuration set as master panel which is the 10.0.14.9 you have, to, you have to do five pushings in the tag button or you, for other manual IP address configuration, you have to access the web server. As Mark said before, the first thing we're gonna do when, the, when install the system is to program the master panel. First of all, I want to show you that we have a program, a software that search all the IP address of the 
<coughs> Goldmar system in the network and this is the device manager if I do a search of IPs in this network now you will see that there is only one IP address this is the factory default IP address that belongs to the master panel and now we are gonna do the program of the master panel first of all we have to access the web server type in the password and now this is the web server of the EL632 G plus 48 <coughs> module this is the first the first page setting section in where you where you will be able to program the module setting the block number the door panel number the floor number change you can change time and day also you can set a manual settings of network parameters but now we are gonna do the automatic settings then you can associate a camera and IP camera typing here its IP address in the following page you can enable the monitor detection as I mentioned in the commercial presentation you will need a peer sensor to work with this mode you can set the illumination LED mode and you can change the language or disable the prompt messages also you can change the mode of logs 1 and 2 then in the push button sections you can set the address to call when you push the different push buttons also you can set the, the panel in single push button type because by default is in double push button type and in double push button type you can reach up to 132 addresses uh, then in zip servers you can add the module in a zip server PAVX in order to work using extensions then you have to select one of the 30 numbers of the list and fill in all the information of the zip server later we 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 will see how how to do it in the basis section you will be able to see all the devices of the installation because as mark said the master panel is which manage all the devices registration and here will be will appear the device information on the you also can export this list and import again the list this is because of any damage of the master panel you will lose all the configuration and if you will need to reinstall all the system you can uh, upload the list and you don't need to reinstall again all the devices also you can add an IP camera and add a zip device in the event log you have the list of all the events occur in the system as uh, lost calls uh, re recordings messages and more you can export all the list and in the about section you have the local information of the device which is the block number the door panel number its IP address and the unit version info for example the firmware version the hardware version also you can you can update its firmware version restore it to default factory values and reboot the device now I am going to program the module in the fair in the main page you have to set the block number as a panel belonging to the block number one the master panel 
and DO panel number is the first panel of the first block. Okay, we say apply. And when we apply all the info, will will appear a message in registration. Then, if we make a search in the device manager software, when the when the device will reboot, now it's rebooting, so you can't find nothing and now you, as you will see here the IP address of the master panel has changed before was the default factory IP address now is the master panel IP address which is 10.0.14.9 now Now I am going to do another search because Mark has connected the following monitor, monitor which belongs to the apartment number one and you will see that it's in the factory default IP address. Okay, now I will open a new tab in which I am going to type again the factory default IP address and I will type again the password and it will appear the web server of the 7 inches monitor as you can see here you can set the language you can choose between Spanish, English and Portuguese you can set the dialing code length but always has to put 5 also you can set the block number uh, the apartment address and the monitor unit then here in the right, in, in right hand you can set the parameter manually of the network data also in zip server sections you can add this device in a in in the server that you cre have created in the master panel in order to work using extensions and in the about section you will be able to to find the local information of the device for, for example dialing code length block number apartment address and also the IP address the gateway and the unit version of the device in in terms of hardware, firmware, also you can update its firmware version, restore the two factory default values and reboot the device. Now we are going we are gonna program the the unit. I will set in Spanish language. As I say now dialing code length number five, block number I will say that it belongs to the number block number one. I will say that this is the uh, unit from apartment address number one and I will say that this is the first apartment unit. I will say in apply and settings will apply. Okay, and now if I go to the when the when the unit reboot and I go to the to the device manager now it's rebooting so you didn't see no you don't do not see nothing if I do a search but when the unit reboots you will realize that the factory default IP address has changed and it becomes a new one that you will see let's see if you can see it now no it's rebooting again i will research again 
now in the moment is rebooting now works if I do a search now now as you can see the default IP address has changed in the this new one IP address now you know how to do the program via web server of the monitor I will explain you how to do it in manual mode uh, you have to keep in mind that the master panel the one that have that we have configured as panel one from block one must be starting the system before register any other device okay the first step is to plug in the monitor into the network and the follow the this screen will appear in which you will be able to to set the language you can set the call digits or dialing code length that always has to be five also you can add the block number that must be between 1 and 98 <clears throat> you can set the apartment number from 1 to 799 also you can set the unit number between 1 and 6 once you have uh, fill it on the fields click on the save button to register the monitor and it will reboot okay if you want to do a manual IP address assignment uh, once the steps described before are done press on the pencil icon then you have to enable data entering pressing on the white dot making it disappear and once the manual data input is enabled we will fill in the fields with the relevant data okay for example in local IP you will type the monitor IP address in subnet mask the monitor subnet mask in the gateway the gateway address of the system and in the server IP will IP you will type uh, master IP master panel IP address okay and finally press the icon to save the initial configuration set and if all data is correct it will appear the next screen and it will reboot. Now we will follow programming the other devices on the installation. We will continue programming the monitors that are on the second apartment and later we will program the monitor that is on the third apartment. As you will see, Art1 will be left for a second part because Art1 is not possible to program by the unit. Let's do it now with the first monitor in the second apartment. By touching the screen, the monitor shows an installation screen because this is the default state after taking out of the box as factory default. Here, the monitor requests us to fulfill a form containing different parameters. We have to set up the language in which we would like that the monitor boots. We'll select English. We have to set up the call dialing length, which we will leave always as number five. We will then set the block number where this monitor is located. We will leave it as number one because this is inside the block number one. And in regards of the apartment, we will set apartment number two because this will be a monitor inside apartment number two in the block number one. Finally, we have to set up which is the device unit because in, within one apartment we can have up to six devices, monitors or art one. In that case, it will be number one. In the case we would like to define other parameters for the IP network, we should go to that icon and here we can modify the Ethernet parameters of the monitor. Its IP address, the gateway, subnet mask. As we are going to leave with the automatic parameters assignment, we'll go back and we will simply tap on the registration button which will register the monitor into the server. Once it's done, we can continue with the other monitor this is monitor number two within the second apartment. The same as we did with the first monitor, we will tap, select the language, we'll leave the call dialing length as five, block number will be number one, apartment is gonna be apartment number two, and in that case, we'll leave the device unit as number two out of six. In that case, we are also not going to modify the IP parameters, we will leave as automatic, so directly we tap on the registration button. The monitor will get registered into the server panel. 
Now I will program the apartment number three. This is the monitor that shows as well the programming page at first. We'll modify the language, get into English. We'll leave as call line length number five. It will be block number one. The apartment number will be number three because this is the third apartment in the block and we'll leave as device one out of six. We won't press this button because we don't need to modify the Ethernet parameters. It will be following the automatic IP assignment. And finally, we will tap this button in order to get registered the monitor. So the monitor is going to register into the system. Now, the only device that is missing to be programmed is the R1, because R1 is not possible to be programmed by its screen. So we can only go to the web browser. Those three devices that I did register right now, they were initially with the default IP address, factory IP address, which ends with the 254, but now they will change the IP address. The only IP address remaining in the network connected as 254 is the R1. We will see that on the browser side. Jose, please follow up. Now we have all monitors installed in the, in the apartment. We're gonna program the, the Art 1G Plus unit, a hands-free audio unit that only allows the web server mode programming because it is necessary to use the web client for both, uh, for automatic and for manual IP address assignment, okay? Now I will show you how I do it. So now, if we make a research, as Mark said before, we realized that the three devices Mark have just registered has changed, have changed its IP, IP addresses, and the only device that remains with the default factory address is the hands-free audio art unit, art 1G+. So now we have to access the web client to program this unit, typing in the web browser its factory default IP address and accessing with the default password. And this is the web server of the Art 1G+. In the first screen, setting section, you will be able to set the physical location of the unit in the installation. And in the right hand of the screen, you will be able to modify its network parameters manually. Here, we can see that there is a field called guard and it has an address. This address can be modified in order to call this address when you push the guard push button on the device and you can enable the automatic answer and also you can enable the H set to call guard. When you push an external push button connected to the H set, uh, you will call the guard address set here. In the SIP server section, you can add the device in a PAVX registered previously on the master panel in order to work with extensions. And in the about section, you will be able to check the local information of the unit and its version of hardware and firmware. Also, you will be able to update its firmware version, restore its values to factory default, and reboot the, the unit. Now, we are going to program the unit. We will say that this uh, unit from the block number one and it's belonging to the apartment address number two and it's the unit number three of the apartment okay we will say apply and after a while when the unit will reboot you will be you will realize that its IP address has changed and it's not the factory default IP address and now it's another one. Now 
it's rebooting, so you cannot think that there is an, a factory default IP address. And when the device makes a ring, it will be changed. Now, we make a research. And here is it. Now, Mark, please uh, explain us and show how the system works and how all the registered device works each other. Now, we are going to check that all the registrations applied are working. So we did program that monitor as address number one in the block one. Those three devices are three addresses inside the apartment number two in the block one and that's the monitor that is inside the apartment number three in the block one. So I will go to the next panel and I will make the calls. I press button one, which it was on the web server of the panel set as address number one. When pressing, the monitor is going to call. Same happens when I press number two. Next button is calling the second apartment. In that case, the three devices will call automatically, simultaneously. So I can reply from any of them. I may reply from the R1 hands free audio unit, for example. Finally, we can see also that the third button is going to call the third apartment. In that case, we have a call repeater connected directly. This is what we are listening. We can also reply and finish the conversation. The next step in the configuration of the IPH Plus system is to add CCTV. IP cameras with Ombi protocol, you will be able to add up to 32 CCTV IP cameras and when the camera is at, you will be able to set permissions in order to decide which monitors or which apartments can preview its images. Okay, to do the configuration and the installation of the IP camera, you will need to go to the master panel web server and then you have to access the devices section and choose the add camera option. Of course, the camera IP address must be in the same range as the panel IP addresses. And Goldmar recommends to use Goldmar CCTV IP cameras because other brands maybe not be not are compatible. Once we have finished with the configuration of the block number one, we're gonna start with the programming of the general access. And in the first place, we're gonna configure the general panel. Is which general panel is which we will register as a panel belonging. To the block 99 and first of all you have to access to the language options with the with the glove icon push button and set your language then you have to access to configuration options and you will need to type the installer password which by default is 2718 then you have to access to panel configurations and then you have to access to address configuration of the panel and some screens will appear in which you will need to fill in with the dialing code length as always we will type 5 uh, you have to set the panel block that is uh, block 99 also you have to set the panel number we will configure it as panel number one and this is for an automatic programming mode and the panel IP address will configure automatically but if you want to do it manually you have to do the same steps and when you arrive to the screen where say automatic you have to select the manual mode then some extra screens will appear and you have to type in the IP address of the panel the subnet mask also the gateway address and the server IP address which is the master panel IP address remember and once you have entered all the addresses, uh, a configuration screen will appear and the system will restart now. So please Mark, show us how, how to do it in the own device. Now what I will do is to make the programming of the general part of the system. I will start with the general panel, which is a code panel 60 model, and I will follow with the guard unit. Let's do the programming on the general panel. Right now, we are going to program the code panel 60. By pressing the button, we can go to the tool button in order to start the programming. It will be requested a password that we will type. 
And now we have to go to the eye and to the geolocation, as Jose explained. We will select the dialing call length as 5, as always. Block number we will set as 99 because this will be the general block, the general part of the block. And we will set the panel as number 1 out of 19. Next question will be related about the IP assignment. We will leave as automatic. Alternatively, we can set the manual, but we will set as automatic. By clicking on the tick, we will start the registration of the panel into the server panel. The last thing to do with the general access programmation is to configure the guard unit. And remember to have configured the master panel, as this is which keeps and manages all the register of the monitors, guard units, and other panels in the installation. And to do the guard unit configuration, we will do the same steps as in the monitor case. You will type in the in the own device the dialing code length, 5 as always. You have to set the block number, goes from 1 to 98. And the unit address, this is a bit different because guard unit uh, has uh, reserved the addresses from 851 to 859. But in case that the guard unit is a general guard unit, the reserve block is uh, 99, uh, as in the case of the general panel. And in case, in this case, the reserve addresses uh, go from 901 to 919. Okay. If you want to do a manual IP address assignment, you have to do the steps described before, and then you have to press the pencil icon. You have to enable manual data introducing, introduction, as in the case of the monitor. And you have to type the local IP address, that is the guard unit IP address. You have to type the subnet mask, the gateway address, and the server IP address, which is the master panel IP address. Finally, press the icon to save the initial configuration set. And if, uh, if data are correct, will appear the configuration screen and the guard unit will reboot. Now, my colleague Mark will do it in the own device. Next is the guard unit. When typing the guard unit screen, it will start with the installation page. We will set the English language. We will set up the call dialing length, which we will leave as number 5. We will say in which block it is located. We will say as well as the panel as block number 99, in order to belong to the general part of the site. And finally, we will set up the guard unit address. In that case, as Jose explained, we will leave as 901 because it's the first guard address into the site. We could set the automatic parameters or manual parameters by this icon, but we will leave as automatic IP assignment, so we just type this button and it will register into the network. Guard unit is requesting to be connected to the network because it was not connected. If we connect to the network, this is a message that we will get when the guard unit is not connected to the network. We can connect it, register again, and it will successfully register. Now that we did already program the general part of the site, the general panel and the guard unit, we can make the test. Here we can see that the guard unit is still booting, but the panel is already registered. So I can directly from this panel, look into the agenda, and the apartments on the block one will already appear on the list. I can choose one of the apartments, for example, apartment number two, and start a call process. Call is in progress, and the apartment number two monitors will start ringing. Alternatively, also, we could, from the devices, go into the view menu, and auto preview the general panel that we have. Guard unit is resetting, already did boot, and we can also check that from the guard unit we are able now to intercom with any of the apartments. If we don't know the dialing code of the apartments, we can simply go into the agenda that is here located, we can edit the agenda list of the block one, we can tap all the devices to be appearing in my agenda. Once it's done, we can simply select and call from the guard unit. Devices are going to reply. We can reply from any of the devices and talk. When we are interested, we can finish the communication. 
As you can see in the third apartment we have connected the Wi-Fi monitor with the PZM private CAL module panel and an auxiliary sounder. We have also connected several push buttons in order to work as an alarm input and another one to work as a doorbell ring. And now my colleague Mark will show you how to how to program the different alarm zones and how to the how the monitor notify its alarm to the general guard unit or to the uh, the owner of the apartment through the G2 Cal Plus app please mark show it now we will see about the alarm setting of the third apartment which has the alarms already here connected so this unit will be able to set up the alarms and we will be able to send the alarms to the guard unit let's see how we can program that now we are going to see how to program the different alarms of the monitor. This monitor is the R7 Wi-Fi monitor, it's equipped with four zone alarms. The alarm now is, dis is disabled, so we cannot enable arm or disarm the alarm. We have to enable it. Let's go to the settings, to the alarm menu. It will be requested a password to access that menu, because it's a protected menu. We have to go to the main settings, and on the main settings we have first to enable the alarm. So now the alarm can be armed and disarmed. The next options are related to the siren alert. We can make this alarm by disabling this option to be a silent alarm. If I enable, I will have to decide about the type of alarm. Being able to edit the time that the alarm will last, how many times I would like to repeat this alarm, how many seconds should keep in between alarm repetitions, and the courtesy time for the arming of the alarm. If we go back, we can also edit the, the zone settings. As we can see, we have four zones. Currently, two of the zones are armed. It's because those zones have been previously configured as permanent zones. Zone 3 and zone 4 is not armed. Let's see those zones on the menu. When we access the zones, we can see here the four zones that we label as kitchen, toilet and entrance. If we go to kitchen, we can see the name of the zone, which will be reported, the type of sensor that we can change in between different options, the time of activation that right now is set to permanent as the alarm is to be always armed independently of the status of the alarm. So that zone will be constantly looking at the status of the sensor. The same we apply to the toilet zone which is to be connected with a water sensor, a flooding sensor, that will as well be permanently activated. So it will not depend on the status of the alarm, whether it's armed or disarmed. Finally, let's see on the third zone, we edit the name label as entrance. However, you can edit this by saying another thing. Let's say it's door. We can change the name. In that case, we link this sensor to be a peer sensor. The activation is delayed, so we'll have five seconds courtesy time, which we can enlarge, and we can say if the type of no contact is normally open or normally closed. Once all the alarms are already set, we can exit this menu, and we can go to the main screen and activate the alarm. Now, this icon is lighted in white because the alarm is enabled. What I will do now is to arm by pressing long over this icon. Now we have 10 seconds courtesy time to leave the apartment because the peer sensor is the time that we set the alarm to be armed. Now we'll make the test over the full demo panel on how to those functions that I've implemented are sent to the different guard units. Now we are going to represent here on the monitor how we are going to implement those alarms once they are registered and how they affect onto the guard. For example, the alarm now is armed. So if I press the button, which represents to be the peer sensor, it will directly send an alarm. We have the five seconds courtesy time, because it's normally the time you have to enter into the apartment. And now the alarm has started to, 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 to make the tone. I can go here to the guard unit, where we can see that also the alarm is represented and I can identify which apartment the alarm comes 
and which is the alarm type and which zone on this apartment. I will accept this alarm and I will also accept here on the monitor. In the case I set as a silent alarm, I will get the report on the guard unit, but the monitor won't make this alarm tone. Now, as I have cancelled the alarm, the alarm is not armed. However, there are two zones that I set for the kitchen and for the toilet, which are constantly triggering. So, if I simply press this one that is belonging to the kitchen, it will automatically and instantly send the alarm to the guard unit and as well to the monitor. Those are also reflected on the APP if the APP is paired with the monitor. I will cancel the alarm. We've seen also that the 12 volt DC output is here lighted. That means that the alarm is also activating an external siren that we may have connected to the system. And this is how we can program the alarms and how we can make them work together with the guard unit. In the case of the, you have an APP because this is a Wi-Fi monitor, that can be also paired with an APP and you can get the report of the alarms on your mobile phone. So that's how to do an, a basic programming of all the equipment. If you want to learn how to do an advanced configuration of the devices or know how to do an advanced settings of the equipment as the SIP server units or the lift controller unit programming, see the specific videos. Thank you.